Hi and welcome to another video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to look at a set that involves data interpretation in the form of a bar graph. What you can do is you can have a look at this set first. You can have a look at the four questions that will follow and then you can solve them on your own. Then have a look at the solution that will follow. So what needs to be done in this particular context is you will need to go through the set and the ideal time to answer this particular set of four questions is going to be roughly four minutes. So if you are able to do it in less than four minutes, brilliant. If you are taking more than four minutes, fair enough, you will have to work on some things when it comes to calculating things in a quicker manner. So let's go ahead and check out the set. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the i button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. Coming to the first question here, what is the total number of black and white display mobiles sold? So we know that whatever ratios has been given to us, the first part is the black and white displays and the second part points towards the number of colored displays or the ratio or the fraction of the displays that are colored in nature. So that is what we need to understand and that's what we will use going ahead and solving this question. Now a word of note, if you are solving this particular set in an actual test or if you have pen and paper on hand, the luxury of which I don't have, what you can do is you can just formulate a small table and keep on filling in information in that table as you go ahead. So there is no need to complete the entire table and then start solving the questions that is not required. What needs to be done is let's say for example the first question asks you what is the total number of black and white display mo mobiles sold. What you can do is you can simply write the number of black and white display models for each of the brands that we have here and then you can use that information perhaps in another question. So that is one practice that will help you. Do not solve everything right at the start unless you are absolutely required to do that. And two, if you have written something, write it in such a manner that you can use it in the subsequent questions. So going ahead and solving the first question, what we have here is the number of black and white display mobiles sold. So we'll do it in a simple manner. There is no shortcut as such when it exists uh, that exists for this particular question. So in terms of Nokia, we have 9 is to 16 as the ratio of black and white is to cover colored. So the number of black and white mobiles of Nokia will be 9 by 25 multiplied by 425. So again, whenever you can see a number that is between 400 and 450 and you are expected to have something like 25 in the denominator, you can go ahead and assume that we are talking about 425 here. So 25 ones are 25, we'll be left with a 17, 175 is 25 sevens are. So 9 into 17 will be 153. So that is the number of Nokia's that have color uh, black and white displays. Similarly, Samsung is one fifth of 200. So one by five into 200 will be 40. Carbon is 12 by 25 into 300. So 25 12s are 300, 12 12s are 144. So that is what we will have here. In terms of Micromax out of 150, 7 by 15 will be black and white. So 7 by 15 into 150 will give you 70. In terms of Fly, you will have 2 by 5 into 125. So 2 by 5 into 125 will be nothing but 50 because 5 25s are 125, 2s are 50. Similarly, Onida will be 7 by 25 into 325. So you can just write it if it's slightly confusing, 7 by 25 into 325. So again, no 25 ones are 25, you'll be left with a 75, 25 threes are 75. So you will have a 91 here. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to add all these numbers quickly. So 153 plus 40 will be 193, 193 plus 144. So 193 plus 100 is 293. 293 plus 7 is 300 and another 37, so 337. 337 plus 70 will be 407. 407 plus 50 will be 457 and 457 plus 91. 457 plus 90 is 547. 547 plus 1 is 548. So the correct answer here is going to be option C that is 548. In this question, what you can do is you can use the information that you had sort of found out in the previous question. So in terms of Onida, the number of mobiles that had a color display would essentially be the remaining part compared to what we had found in the previous question. So in terms of Onida, we had figured out that the number of mobiles with black and white display was 91 if you remember, right? So 7 by 18. So we did 7 by 25 into 325, which was 7 into 13 or 91. 
So if 91 mobiles had color had black and white displays rather, the number of mobiles with colored displays would be 325 minus 91, which will be 5 minus 1, 4, 32 minus 9 is 23. So the number of Onida mobile phones with colored display would be 234 or option D. In this question, we have to figure out the ratio of the number of Nokia black and white display mobiles. Again, something we have already found out. So, Nokia black and white display mobiles, how many of them are there? So, Nokia in total 425. So, if you remember what we had done in the first case, what we had figured out 9 by 25 into 425. Now, obviously, if you have things handy, you can easily say that this is 153 as we had already found out. So, the number of black and white Nokias is 153. And we have to figure out the ratio of the number of Nokias to the number of Samsung color display mobiles. So in terms of Samsung, what we had done is we had figured out that one fifth of 200 or 40 phones were had black and white displays. So the number of phones with color displays would be 200 minus 40 that is 160. So the ratio is going to be 153 by 160. And so the correct answer here has to be option B 153 is to 160. Here we have to figure out the total number of mobiles sold and we have to figure out how many of them or what percentage of them were Nokia mobiles. So if you look at the number of Nokia mobiles here, we know that it is 425. If you want to add all the things that we have here, you can easily add all of them quickly. What you can also do in this particular context is you know that each line corresponds to a multiple of 50. So that might make your life easier. Whatever is the remaining part is 25. So instead of adding 425 plus 200 and so on, what you can do is you can just add whatever lines are within the bar. So in this case, we can add a 400 plus 200 that is 600 plus 300 is 900 plus 150 is 1050 plus 100 is 1150 plus 300 is 1450. And then we had 325s. So we will have 1450 plus 75 that is 1525. So that is what we will have. You can also add it normally, it is not a problem. So, 425 plus 200 is 625 plus 300 is 925 plus 150 is 1075. 1075 plus 125 is going to be 1200, 1200 plus 325 is again 1525. Either way is perfectly okay. We have to find this in the form of a percentage. So, what we can do is we can cancel out a 25 easily. 25 1s are 25, we are left with a 17. So, 175 is what remains. 25 7s are 175. Again, I can cancel out something from the denominator. 25 6s are 150 and you will have 25 1s are 25. So that is what we will have 1700 by 61. Now again, this might sound to be particularly time consuming if you are looking at this question during the test. But again, you have to be good with numbers if you have to crack data interpretation sets at the CET. So 61 2s are 122. Till here, I do not think it should be any problem. Now, out of 170, 122 is removed, you will be left with a 480. Now, the people who are really good at quant or are really good with numbers will be able to solve it in the next step. So, you are not expected to find out whether it is 28.64, whether it is 27.87 or whatever. You can see that there is a critical point that exists here, which is 28. So, if you look at all the options, they are scattered around 28. We have three options that are less than 28. We have two options that are greater than 28. So as soon as you figure out what your answer is in terms of 28, you know that you are on track to get the right answer or at least you would have bettered your chances. If I mark an answer blindly, I have 20% chance of success. But if I know that my answer is greater than 28 for sure, then my chances of success become 50%. Similarly, if it is less than 28 and again, if I mark it without putting any thought, the chances of me getting the correct answer will be one third or 33.33%. So that's basically how you play with percentages during the test as well. Coming back to the question, if you look at it, we have 480 left. Now 61 versus 480, 68s are 480. If 68s are 480, then 61 8s will be greater than 480. So if this would have been a number greater than 480, I would have been more or less certain that it could be 61 into 8, but this is less than 61 into 8. So can we say that my answer is going to be 27 point something? And that's why the correct answer here is going to be option A that is 27.87. You can figure out whether the answer is correct or not using a calculator, but I can assure you that the answer is correct. So I hope you have learned something in terms of data interpretation and you will be able to attempt sets that involve bar graphs in a confident manner going ahead. Wait for the next video. We will come up with more such concepts to keep you engaged. Till then, happy learning.